Rob here at eTrailer.com, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Kurt Class 1 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2012 Volkswagen Passat. Now here's what our hitch is going to look like once we have it installed. It'll have a really clean, almost factory appearance to it, because the cross tube is going to be hidden completely behind the bumper, and all we're going to see is the receiver tube sticking out. That's also going to give us an advantage because that cross tube is not going to be hanging below our bumper, so we're not going to lose too much ground clearance. But since our hitch is a class one, it is going to give us that inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter receiver tube opening and be really nice for bike racks, some smaller cargo carriers, or if you need to tow a small trailer. But regardless of what you're going to be using your hitch for, all of our accessories are going to attach to the hitch pin hole here on the side. And our hitch is going to accept a standard half inch pin and clip. Now these are not included with the hitch, but you can find them here at eTrailer.com along with some locking devices and anti-rattle devices to keep them secure and cut down on that noise when we're driving down the road. Now if you are going to be towing a trailer, obviously you need a spot to hook up your safety chains. And here we have a loop style, so we'll have plenty of room to get those hooks on or off. But also keep in mind there are specific ball mounts made for our hitch, so if you do want to tow, you can find them here at eTrailer.com. Now as far as the weight ratings go on our hitch, our hitch is going to have a 200 pound tongue weight. That's going to be the maximum downward force at the end of the receiver tube. It's also going to have a 2,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's how much our hitch can pull, but that does include the trailer and everything we have loaded on it. So you do want to double check your Volkswagen's owner's manual because that's the rating for the hitch and we don't want to exceed the manufacturer's rating for the car. I'd like to give you a few measurements and these are going to help you whenever you're looking for accessories for your new hitch, like a bike rack or a cargo carrier. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of the bumper is right about three and a half inches. Now that measurement is going to come in handy when you're looking at folding accessories to make sure you have enough room and they're not going to come in contact with the rear bumper. And from the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening is right about 11 and a half inches. Now at that height I would definitely recommend a bike rack or a cargo carrier that has a raised shank that way we can get a little bit more ground clearance out of it. But now that we've seen what our hitch looks like and gone over some of the features, let's go through the install together. To begin our installation, we want to come to the back of our facade and we want to loosen up all the fasteners that are holding the fascia down. Here we have several pushpin fasteners that are holding it in. You may have pushpins or you may have torque screws, but regardless, we want to pull all of those fasteners out of the very bottom. There's going to be a little notch in your pushpins. You want to pop out the center section first, that'll take the tension off, and then we can pull out the rest of the pushpin. Now over on the passenger side, right behind this trim panel at the bottom of the fascia, we're going to have a Torx screw that's holding it in. So we're going to grab a T25 Torx bit and pull that out. Then you just want to double check that the bottom of the fascia is loose and we can actually pull it away like this and have plenty of room to work. We're going to move to the inside of our trunk now and we want to pull out all of the, the floor coverings and the spare tire. Now the spare tire out of the way, if we look on the bottom of the trunk pan, we're going to find two rubber plugs that are going to be towards the back, the very back towards our bumper. We need to pull these out, so you can grab a flat blade screwdriver or a trim panel tool or whatever you have available. We just want to start working our way around the edge to kind of break that glue loose until we can get the edge of it to come up far enough that we can grab it and pull it out. And once you have it Broke loose to where you can grab it. We should be able to grab it and just start peeling it back until we can get the whole plug out. And if we end up ripping it, it's okay. You don't need to worry about saving it because we're not going to reinstall this plug. And make sure you pull out the one on the other side as well. Now in your kit, you're going to get these large plate washers that have a square hole in them. We want to line these up so they sit right over those plugs that we just removed. Before we put them in though, I'm going to put down some silicone around the hole. That way it'll keep any kind of moisture or anything from leaking inside the trunk, whether it be water or gas fumes. And we'll take our plate washer and we'll sit it right over the top. And make sure that silicone starts coming out around the edges and it's nice and sealed up. We'll do the same thing for the other hole. 
We're gonna move back to the bottom of our fascia now. We wanna find the center point, and then we're gonna mark out the area that needs to be trimmed. You'll find that diagram in your instructions. And I always suggest trimming a little bit smaller because we can always take more material out if we need to, but you can't put it back. And when you go to cut this, you just want to make some nice clean lines. Take your time. I'm going to be using a rotary tool, but you can use a knife or whatever you have available. Now we're going to move underneath our fascia. You kind of want to pull it back a little bit. And if we look up on each side, we'll find our frame rail. We want to grab the plates. They're going to have two nuts in it. We want to slide this on top of our frame rail so that the nuts are on either side. But you want to make sure that the nuts are facing up so when we put our bolts in, we can start them easily. So we'll just reach up, make sure that it's going to either side and we'll repeat that process with the other plate on the other frame rail. Then we can grab our carriage bolts. We're gonna drop them down through the square holes that are in those plate washers in the trunk. There'll be one for each one of the plate washers. Now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna get our hitch lifted into position. We need to pull back on the fascia a bit. We're gonna push it behind the fascia, and behind the bumper area. And once we get it behind the fascia, we'll lift it up to where our bolts are gonna line up and drop down through the hitch. Once you have the bolts dropping down through, we're gonna take one of our flange nuts, and right now I'm just gonna loosely secure it by hand, putting one on each one of the bolts. That way the hitch will support itself, and we can get the rest of our hardware in place. Now for our side attachment points where we put that plate with the nuts on it, we're going to grab the long bolts out of our kit, an iconical tooth washer, and slide it on making sure that the teeth are facing away from the head of the bolt. We're going to pass it through the plate on our hitch and we're going to guide it up. And if you can, you want to try to guide it directly into that nut plate and get it started by hand. It may be a little bit tight fit to get everything in there. Our bolts will reach, but you might not be able to get your hand up on that plate. So you just want to get it started by hand, at least to where you know it's caught, and then we'll get the rest of the hardware in using the same combination. Now since it's really hard to see on top of the hitch where our nut plates are, if you can get the outer bolt started, we should be able to get the inner one started as well, only because it'll be a little bit easier to reach and kind of angle everything so it lines up properly. But we're gonna have the same combination of hardware on the other frame rail. I'm gonna come back with a three quarter inch socket and tighten up the two flange nuts at the top. I'm also gonna use that three quarter inch socket to tighten up the two bolts that are going around our frame rail. Now with these, I like to alternate going back and forth between the two. That way it gets an even clamping force and it doesn't bind up and go on crooked. You want to make sure you come back with a torque wrench, torque all your hardware down to the specified amount of the instructions. Make sure you go back and repeat that for all your remaining hardware. Then we're going to put all the screws back in the bottom panel here. We can also put all the panels back in our trunk and our spare tire. Once you have that done, that'll finish up your install and your look at the Kurt Class 1 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver on our Volkswagen Passat.